Like if you look at it from this side, it's like oh <laughs> yeah, as soon as I no, yeah, no, they're, no, they're super racist, especially Brenda. Oh. Every so often we get those countries that has like a lot of land, but almost the entire population. It's uh, like this. Yeah. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> no, no. Mansa Musa makes his huge pilgrimage to Mecca. The decline of the Malian Empire. Okay, Mamu, they told me you know, talking Kenya. Uh, Hello guys, my name is Mengi, I'm from Kenya, I am joined by Breno from Brazil and then Tilo from Uzbekistan Tilo from Uzbekistan, you guys heard it uh, So today we're here to do a reaction to Geography Now Does the camera seem a bit red? A reaction to Geography Now Mali uh, Mali is the country you guys were asking about I think in Mali is where they're gonna talk about Mansa Musa mm -hmm. I'm not Mali I want to know his yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but first of all, let's talk a bit about. Uh, what you, have you guys ever heard anything about Mali? But then you guys were asking about Mansa Musa. So Mali, Mali. No, no, Mali, 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 Mali. Now nah, Mali is one of those nations you like. <laughs> nah, yeah, I, I think I know about that. Uh, no, nah, jokes aside though, uh, Mali is a country in West Africa. This is where you hear about Timbuktu. You guys have never heard of Timbuktu. You're so ignorant. So. <laughs> oh my God. Um, that's why we're here to do this. We're here to educate people about Africa. We're here to let people know our perspective. I know it's random. You know, Jello, in my in my content, we never hear about your country. We never hear about you. Yeah, the same. Yeah. We don't hear anything about <laughs> the same goes to you. We don't hear anything about Kenya, Mali. We don't see anything about Ethiopia. Okay, so guys, we're gonna we're now gonna watch the geography now Mali video. Uh, if you guys like find anything interesting, just press pause and all that. Ask any questions, feel free. Uh, but don't say racist stuff. You know, no, I uh, they, you know, <laughs> behind camera they seem nice now. Behind camera, no, they're, no. they're super racist, especially Breno. Oh, uh, yeah. What are you talking about, bro? No, no. Now, if there's one country that holds all the deepest ancient secrets and treasures of historical Africa, you might say Egypt, Ethiopia. Which, okay, yeah, 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 those are viable candidates. But try a country with the richest guy that ever existed. Existed with cities flourishing in science, astronomy, and literature, and gold. Looks like good old Jolly Molly just stepped in the ring. Oh yeah, I heard about this. No. Uh, and like, because in my history class mm -hmm. is like only Egypt, mm -hmm. like Brionin, and then like I was searching for this, like ah, the most rich man in the world was like mm -hmm. an African king, and like oh, there was more kings than only Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Like there are kings mm. all across the continent. Yeah, yeah, like and then I was searching so and like many African empires. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh my gosh. And that, we never you saw You never this. learned anything about no, that. No, that's I'm not bad. That's I'm bad. Not surprised. I saw that guy in the facts, like you read in the Instagram. Oh, yeah. Like facts. Oh, yeah. Like the richest man <laughs> in the world like, was mm. this guy. Yeah, I like uh, Tillo actually does his own research about a lot of things. He's very knowledgeable on very many things, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, it's true. Uh, it's true. <laughs> you are. Uh, you spend like what? Like one hour in the morning just looking up new information. Oh, every day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. good habit. Yeah. 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 It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Today, Mali may look pretty different from what it used to look thousands of years ago, but there's still a fascinating story of people that have made this fast-growing nation their home. Let's jump back into the sands of Africa, shall we? The name Mali originally is derived from the Mandika word for hippopotamus, but later it came to mean the place where the king lives. Either way, there's like a connotation of strength behind it. First of all, Mali is landlocked, located in Western Africa, bordered by eight other countries, straddling the prime meridian near the city of Goa, which means if you visit, you can stand in two different hemispheres at once. They also have no specific singular northernmost or easternmost points, as the borders are straight lines. The country is made up of ten regions, and the capital Bamako, which administers itself as its own district entity. Mali is kind of split into two separate parts, the fertile sub-Saharan southwest, where about 90% of the population lives, and the arid Saharan northeast, which makes up about 65% of the country's land mass. Yeah. Super big, yeah? Yeah, it is really big. <laughs> and I know that, I, I heard that if they put, if they put the, uh, this solar panels, okay. it can generate the electricity for the whole world. For the whole world? Yeah. This so in the whole Saharan? Yeah. Or just the Mali section of yeah, the Yeah, this. Okay. 
Okay. If they put this, it can just Generate support power. the whole wall. The north is where the tension started between the communities, mostly ethnic Tuaregs, against the central Malian government, vying for secession into a whole new self-proclaimed independent area they call Azawad, led by the MNLA, or National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad. In 2012, fights broke out. Oh, they have this kind of uh, secession fights movement? everywhere. Oh, yeah, but then, honestly, it's, like, while, it's like yeah. a desert, like... <laughs> I mean, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who cares? I mean, it matters, but uh, I don't it is a desert. Take it. <laughs> Anyways, okay, okay, okay. Um, um, I would say that, but it's not all like that. Like, for example, Senegal. Senegal is stable. Burkina Faso is stable. Cote d'Ivoire is stable. Ghana. Uh, it's like this, but also this is Mali. I don't know if Niger is stable. I don't mm. know. <laughs> and shortly the Malian government came in and regained control The president visited the headquarters in Kidal to seek talks However today the push for autonomy and nationalism still kind of lives on It's a tricky situation I'm not going to sugarcoat it Most travel agencies give at least some advisories against visiting these regions no, for now no, You know, Due to the somewhat unstable political atmosphere But I wanted to see Timbuktu You can, just use your best to You guys have not heard of Timbuktu What? what? Never heard about it. Man, what is it? how do you guys know about Mansa Musa but not about Timbuktu? That's is where, it the city? Yeah, that's where all the old uh, libraries and scholars used to live. Oh, nice. Like Socrates? It's kind of like, no, no, it's actually, it is kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Discretion and be smart, that's all. After the capital, Bamako, the largest cities are Sisako and Mopti, and the country only has one main international airport, Bamako's Senu International. Technically, Gao also has an international airport, but it only services the Dutch Air Force and UN peacekeeping mission flights. Other regional airports like Timbuktu and Mopti are around, but with either suspended or limited service, which is sad because Timbuktu is like such a historic place of significance. We'll get into that later. Now, the country has a vast domain that extends all the way to the middle of the Sahara. However, there is only one trans-Saharan roadway that crosses into Algeria at the border of El Khali, which Algeria put a double wall barricade around on their side. Otherwise, the Timbuktu region has no highway that extends to the north and virtually no people live there. However, some intrepid nomads and even tourists either take a car ride or camel caravan to what might be considered the most remote, isolated outpost in the world, Tau Deni, the famous historic salt mine that people have been excavating from for centuries. Now, we'll explain a yeah, little What is that? Tau Deni, uh, it's just a salt mine, it's nothing. A little more later in the video on how Mali is very historically significant, not just in Africa, but in the entire world. And today you can see former remnants of its glory in certain areas. Some places of interest might include- The thing is, it's straight line. Colonialism. Um. Yeah. <laughs> you see, they just drew the maps. Ah, this looks like a nice place to draw a line. <laughs> I'm gonna put a line there. Look at the country, even. Uh -huh. The way it's shaped, it's so it's such an, an odd shape. It seems like, like faces. How right? does like this the eye work? Here, uh, the nose, the nose, yeah. the eye, nose, it's the like head. A, it's like, like a number the, four. Uh, it can be. So. It's like a yeah, number. Yeah, it looks like a number four even. Like, yeah. But you see, like the, the face here. You see, like the yeah. chin. Or, or honestly, like, like if you look at it from this side, it's like oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Include places like the National Museum in Bamako, the City Center Market, the Artisan Market, the Independence Monument, the Rose Dune, the Dandan Waterfalls, Fort de Medine, Bamako Grand Mosque, the National Zoo, pretty much anything in the fabled city of Timbuktu. Right? Oh, that's yeah. why it's designed. This is part of the that's design. That's why it was designed. What is They've this? They've been designing mosques like this okay. forever. And then the libraries, the old libraries, they used to design them like that. Why do they have this? Uh, it's to like control the temperature. It's like ah. it's like it's like a building technique that they used with Timbuktu being the capital of that empire. Mm -hmm. For sure. yeah. To the pottery venues of Segu, cliff villages of Bandigara, the Emperor Askia tomb, and the entire country is famous for having multiple traditional style mud brick mosques and buildings. However, the one that most people know about would probably be the most iconic landmark of the country, the Great Mosque of Jeneh. It is the largest mud brick building in the world, made in its complete form in 1907, refurbished every year after weather damage, and it's featured on the coat of what is that? World made in its complete form in 1907, refurbished. What is this? It's a mosque. No, oh, white people are, ah, they're painting? Yeah, they're refurbishing it. Oh, ah, okay. Why they were like... Uh, climbing? Yeah, climbing. Climbing to the <laughs> exact rock climbing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, be every year after weather damage, and it's featured on the coat of arms, which we will discuss on Flag Friday. Stay tuned. Otherwise, the real powerhouse of Mali, though, would have to be the one amazing life source almost the entire population depends on, the Niger River. Which brings us to... Every so often we get those countries that has like a lot of land, but almost the entire population is crammed into one small comfortable urban area that few venture outside of. <laughs> Wait till you get to my country's episode. Mali lies on what is known as the West African Craton, which is like some kind of geological plate zone that people who study rocks are probably interested in. The country is divided into three main physical regions, the hot dry Saharan desert in the north, the semi-arid Sahel savanna zone in the middle, and the tropical savanna and light forest zone in the far south. Nonetheless, the largest permanent lake would be Lake Manatali in the south, an artificial lake created by the Manitali Dam. Nonetheless, with water, there's only one guy that everybody is paying attention to, the Niger River. The entire Malian economy is almost confined to this riverine area as it traverses five of the regions, including Timbuktu and Gao in the north. It passes through the capital Bamako as well as every major city of commercial significance. Otherwise, further to the west lie the branches of the Senegal River, which completes the backbone of the country. And it's also here in this area you can probably find the national animal, the leopard. The rainy season in the south sometimes causes the Niger River to flood, creating the Niger River Delta. It is. Noah, you know the deal. Take over. I got it. Despite the presence of water, only about 10% of the land is forested, and only about 6% is arable. Even though about 70% of the workforce is engaged in agriculture, making about 42% of the GDP. Nonetheless, crops are not the country's largest product, but rather gold and cotton, which make up about 80% of export earnings alone. Mali is Africa's third largest gold producer, and the most profitable mines are found in the southeast Bambouk Mountains. Speaking of resources, food! In Mali, there are a lot of of different regional cuisines that different people groups are known for. But some nationwide known dishes might include things like Malian style jollof rice. Jablan? I remember. That you remember? Rice. You remember? Yeah. Ah, jollof rice. We had it in the Senegalese place and then we filmed it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, those videos have end up being useful <laughs> in this video. Yeah. Juice, meat and peanut sauce, Torek style alabaja, pakoye, saga saga, Malian tea, and pule yasa. Yeah, pule as in the French word for chicken, which tells you a little bit of the backstory for these people. Let's discuss more in. Once again, that was Noah. Thank you a lot, man. Follow him on Instagram. Send him fan mail. Mali is interesting because it's a nation that struggles, yes, but they do it in like the most colorful, unique, exuberant, flashy way. And every region has their own type of flashiness. First of all, the country has about 18 million people and has the third highest birth rate in the world, expected to double in population by 2035. The population is pretty diverse, made up of several ethnic groups. About half of the population falls under the broader Mande group. About 16% fall under the various Fula or Fulani peoples. 13% under the Voltaic groups and 10% most in the north are Touareg and Moorish peoples, and the rest are made up of other people groups with a sizable Songhai minority. Yeah, we mentioned the Mande peoples, which make up the largest group in Mali. They are descended from the peoples that would eventually create and maintain the three most famous empires of West Africa, the Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Woohoo! Yeah! These are the empires, the main ones that existed at that time. Mm -hmm. So you will hear Ghana Empire. Ghana, the current country, has nothing to do with the <laughs> empire. Okay. Somebody just gave it that random name. I don't know what. Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mali, and then Songhai. I don't know about you guys, but like in our schools, we do study about the Songhai, and the Mali, and then Ghana. Because they're such big empires, but we do not specifically study about Mansa Musa. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know why. Kenyan historical people don't consider him important. Mm -hmm. Historically, Mali played a huge role in the Trans-Saharan trade routes between the Sahara. So, you guys have the Silk Road. We have the Trans-Saharan and whatever mm -hmm. thing going on. Right? <laughs> yeah. Kingdoms of North when do you use this for? Uh, so, trade. Trade. This uh, is for West Africa, though. For East Africa, it's something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's the Sahara Desert and all that. North Africa, Timbuktu and Jenny were centers of learning, science, astronomy, and literature in the... This is why. Timbuktu has existed for a long time. Long, long, long time. Uh, and the, that king, he built libraries, mosques, and all that. They were centers of learning where people used to go to gain all this knowledge about the world and all that. And plus, when he made a pilgrimage to Mecca, that journey was popularly recorded and all that. So you guys should... You I know about that. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. 14th century, Mansa Musa was disputably one of, if not the most rich man that ever possibly existed. And it wasn't until European sea trade and subsequent famines and invasions by the Moroccans that these empires started to decline. The famous Dogon peoples that have the world's longest religious ceremony, the Sea Gi Festival that happens once every 60 years, and the event in itself can last years. Wow. They also have the Lake. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, the guy on the thing? Uh, okay. yeah. Every 60 years? Oh man, I do not even know about that. <laughs> that I do not know about. That's new to me. Yeah, it's That's new. also new to me. Once in a life. What about these people? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Antogo Lake Fish Frenzy? Antogo Fish Frenzy at the Sacred Lake once a year. Men jump in <laughs> oh. and catch as many fish as they can. Then we reach the northern peoples, mostly Tuareg, a people group related to the Berbers in northern Africa. They inhabit the vast Saharan landscape. These people have millennia of pre-Islamic history and traditions rooted in desert-adapted tribes and customs found nowhere else on Earth. Otherwise, faith-wise, Mali is quite unique. There's a saying, Mali is 98% Muslim, 2% Christian, and 100% animist. Much like we studied in the recent... Why is an animist? Animist is like, how do I explain? It's like, the, the, it's like traditional African religion. Like, you, plants have souls, inanimate objects have souls, a natural phenomena. So, I don't know. My friend was telling me about how they believe in like voodoo. Some mm -hmm. people in Brazil believe in like mm -hmm. all that voodoo stuff. But it's not that stuff. It's like just saying the plant has a soul. Mm -hmm. uh, something I else has a soul. Brazil is like, they are Christian. Uh, they are Christian. They are, they are too Christian. religious. They are Christian and they're too religious. But then my friend was telling me about how well, they have like most in the cult. Yeah, like most. like some some people will do voodoo. Voodoo. And they have you haven't heard of Protestantism, Spiritism. Is that it? No, it's another. No, I, but I know because it's really famous. Yeah, that's because almost some part the, of the same region. kind of thing, but not. Yeah, I think like spirits. Serious spirits. Yeah, but like these Africans, uh, okay. religious like Umbandians, Candomblé. Anyway, it's like it's like that. Uh, okay, see, we can go back to the video. A Swatini episode, the majority of Mali's population in the south somewhat adheres to a form of religious pluralism, in this case with Islam. Many claim to be Muslim, mostly in the Sufi order, but synchronize traditional animist practices as to retain connections mm -hmm, to their mm -hmm, pre- mm -hmm. So, they will practice some things that, like, in the Quran will, will be like a big no-no, but they will still say, I am Muslim. It's mm -hmm. like that. Even in Kenya and East Africa, some people are like that. And that's how it's like with Africa religion. Yeah, it, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But also, people want to keep a bit of who they were previously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It It's it's like that. And in West Africa, if you go to like Senegal, they're Muslim, but they don't absolutely adhere to adhere to like everything the Quran says. The quickest way I can put it, tribes and people groups inhabit the upper Niger River Basin, the empire of Mali becomes a dominant force, Mansa Musa makes his huge pilgrimage to Mecca, the decline of the Malian empire, Moroccans defeat the Songhai, Timbuktu becomes the capital, huge famine in the 1800s, French occupation, it becomes French Sudan, independence, this guy becomes president, March revolution, political system changes, northern Mali conflict in 2012, things look good for a short while but then another attack happens three years later, UN peacekeeping forces continue to send aid, the country slowly tries to accommodate the rapid population growth, and here we are today. Let's discuss Mali's diplomacy now, shall we? For Mali, friends are interesting because historically they've already been linked to so many people across Africa, but modern politics and mainstream culture has also played a strong role as well. For one, outside of Africa, France is probably the closest friend. As a former colony, France holds close ties. French people make up the largest tourist group even after the northern conflict. Speak Spanish? Yeah. They speak French. French. They do speak French. They speak some Arabic. They speak, uh, what's it called? French, and then national languages. Uh. French, Arabic, English, Fulani, Mandinka. I was even wrong. I, I was thinking Bambara, but that might be Niger. I was curious about this, like DNA tests to see your history. Oh, yeah, I want to do it. I want to uh, do it too. Because like, I was talking about like the, you know, I, I do a lot of these reactions and people are like, oh, but then you should also look up what history you have. Because you say you're Bantu, but you might also have a Motek blood. Of you course, might have yeah. like a mm. bunch of like, yeah. No, no, that's a bad man. This is us. All of this. Mm. We're all related. Uh, and these guys are also related to us, the ones in gray. gray. But then they, uh, our, the way we speak is different. Mm -hmm. But these guys, us, let's say I say one, 
in my language it will be the same in these people mm-hmm. the same in these people all oh, that yeah yeah so then, then yeah, you yeah. have the swahili people right there but then they spread the culture spread up until the inside mm-hmm. yeah but it's super big so like, yeah. it's not like you know, have yeah. this and then you have the other people groups and then in mali this is mali remember the bambara i was telling you about uh yeah. based. it's a turkic mm-hmm. languages yeah. for him so these are these guys mm-hmm. yeah for me it's yeah. this area mm-hmm. also okay. northern iran azerbaijan azerbaijan is all like our language is all all oh, similar like yeah. if i hear azerbaijani people speaking i can understand what about weaker the week yeah well oh. The same. Oh. As your Swahili. Like as your Swahili. It's like the same. Yeah. Yo. Okay, it's a little tricky because it depends on who you ask. Culturally, the people of the South identify closer with their neighbors and probably consider countries like Burkina Faso, the Ivory Coast, and Guinea as their best friends. Whereas the Northern peoples identify closer with Mauritania, Algeria, and Niger. Each one also having high populations of the same ethnic groups like the Tuareg and Berber. With that being said, with Algeria, it's a little tricky. There was a hostage situation in the Algerian consulate in 2012. And since then, the Algerian prime minister has planned to work alongside the MNLA, which means South Mali has a little issue with them. In conclusion, Mali is a nation with thousands of years telling a story built off of sand, mud, rivers, and gold. And today, even amidst the conflict, they know where they've come from and they keep their story alive. Stay tuned, Malta is coming up next. Ah, I did not forget. Okay, that's that for the Geography Now Mali video. What do you guys think? It's super interesting. Yeah. What do y'all think? It's interesting, but the video is it's a uh, kind of fast or like it goes it jumps from one side to another side mm. it doesn't you wanted it to be more uh, in depth you want a one hour video no no man no, no, no. the new no. videos this guy's making are like 30 minutes long if i showed you the geography now somalia video it would be a 40 minute oh, video no. uh, like like the quick it, just it's just a quick quick yeah, like yeah. just quick quick facts facts and then like sometimes you forget what okay. you watched okay mm-hmm. okay okay but it's good I, i i learned a lot about mali they have very deep history okay i think this is just the beginning like mm-hmm. just the uh, like for uh, one one that doesn't know anything like us okay but I mean, so it's, it's, it's like a good intro video basically yeah, sure. what yeah, you're yeah, saying it is okay good intro okay video. okay uh yeah but i was i'm curious about like this peregrination what His name P- P- peregrination Who? Of the king. What about the king? No, he said uh, he... Mansa Musa? What yeah, Mansa Musa went to Mecca. Oh, he went to Mecca Hajj? Are you talking about yeah. the Hajj? Thing? No, I never heard yeah. about it. You've never read about it? No, no. no. He, that's, why, that's how people knew he had money. Because ah. of that 